Mountain Church. How you doing? Yes. Well, we're glad that you're here, glad that you're with us this morning. If I haven't had the privilege to meet you yet, my name is Matt McDonald. I'm the lead pastor here, and uh, we're excited and thankful that you chose to spend uh, part of your Sunday morning with us. Uh, got something a little bit unique going on this morning. We're excited. As Tina was saying, this is our Youth Unity Sunday. Uh, and so you'll see our, our mid-schoolers, our high schoolers serving all over the place. You saw some of them, in, some of them this morning on stage. Um, but one thing I love actually about this Sunday and every Sunday is as far as the serving goes, there's not too much of a difference. Because uh, our youth are serving all the time, everywhere anyways. Uh, and so we're just intentionally highlighting them. And so we have uh, something kind of unique, something special we're looking forward to that we're going to do this morning. In the past, when we've done Sundays like this, we, we've had a few ways of uh, facilitating this part of the service, whether it's a, a traditional sermon, a message. We've done Q&As where the students ask us questions, and we give them the answers to the best of our ability. But we're, we're switching it up a little bit uh, this year, mainly because their, their questions got so hard. Um, they were really difficult to answer well. Uh, it's kind of like I got Starbucks with my daughter, who's almost 10 this morning, and we, we, we get her hot chocolate. She's like, Dad, why is that hole in the lid? I'm like, well, it's so you can drink it. Easy. Next question. Um, <laughs> she said, Dad, no, not that hole. The little tiny the little tiny hole that you can barely see in the lid. Like, why do they put that there? What's that, what's that for? And I'm like, well, that's, it's for the, 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 the it's so the drink can kind of, j- drink your hot chocolate, Lily. That's why it's there. Um, <laughs> And so the questions were getting harder, and so we thought, what a, what a cool opportunity uh, for us as the church in the spirit of one of our core values, which is we build bridges. We build a lot of different bridges. One of them is generational bridges. We're not just the church for the old, for the young, for the middle age. We're, we're a church for all generations because we believe we serve a generational God. Amen? And so in the spirit of building bridges, we thought, what a cool opportunity for us as a church to fire our questions away at our students and have our students answer from their perspective with what they're facing in the world today, with everything going on. Uh, So we're really, really excited about that. Um, As we get into it, I want to just introduce who's going to be facilitating for us. This right here is Amy Armistead. You guys, most of you know her. An amazing, amazing woman of God, woman of faith, so much wisdom, so much knowledge and intellect just flows out of, of this amazing woman of God. So we're excited to have her up here with us. And then our very own youth director, Caleb Solano, is going to be facilitating. So I'm going to get out of their way and let them take it from here. Caleb, it is all yours, sir. My name is Will Armistead, and I'm a sophomore in high school, and I've been following Jesus for about seven years. Um, my name is Elijah Vasquez. I'm a senior, and I've been following Jesus for, like, about a year and a half. My name is Isabella Solano. I'm in seventh grade, and I've been following Jesus for my whole life. My name is Toby Stewart, and I've been following Jesus since I was three, and I'm in seventh grade. And uh, thank you guys so much for sharing. Um, We have some awesome questions, so let's go ahead and jump in, starting with Elasia. What are some of the unique challenges today's youth face in living for Jesus, and how do you overcome them? Um, For me, I think it's, like, social pressure from, like, your school. For example, like... um, Jesus is, well, I'm not saying it's, he's not cool, but he's not cool to other kids. <laughs> and so it's like, huh, you know? Or like if you hear someone talking about him, like talking smack, like, oh, these Christian people. And it's just like, you're just sitting there. They don't even know you, like you're Christian. And you're just like, huh. <laughs> um, but I think uh, that that's probably the one of the biggest ones that I can think of. Yeah, thank you. Lifelong lesson for sure. So Toby, this next one is for you. In 1 Timothy 4.12, it says, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. What does this mean for you and your role at CGC? I think despise is a very strong word. Like, why would anyone despise anyone for that matter? Um, so, look down on might be easier I think some translations say that in the Bible um, others say other things um, 
At CGC, I think this means being an example and serving selflessly at church regardless of what people think of you. Like, you could be being really weird, but still serving. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And sometimes people just look down on you either way, but sometimes that just means being the example even when people don't listen to you. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Toby. I feel like you do such a good job of living that out. I actually shared this verse with Toby when we were at camp, um, and I just feel like you do such a great job, and you have such an influence about you, so thank you so much for sharing that, Toby. Hi, Bella. What would you tell a fellow student who does not attend any church your top three reasons why it's so important for them to get involved in their local church? Um, The first one is so they can learn about God, know God, and have a relationship with him. I think that's very important for the first step. Um, The second one is to find Christ-centered friends who tell you more about what the Bible says. And the third one is it's a good place to be to have people there for you that tell you stuff about Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Bella. Will, this next question is for you. What do you find most difficult about living as a Christian teen? What things do you think the church can do to best support your generation? Um, I think the thing most difficult is about being a Christian teen is that there are a lot of temptations and things of the world that aren't Christ-like. And peer pressure does play a role in that as well. And it's like, what can I do to fit in or what can I do to make people like me more? But I have to remember that my identity is in Christ, not not anyone else. Amen. And how do you, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go. Um, How do you actively, like, pursue your identity in Christ? Um, I think just keep praying and doing my devotions, uh, get closer to God, and also doing things like this in front of all you guys. I think just things that get me closer to God and also surrounding myself with people of Christ. Um, Alasia, what is the biggest challenge for you at this time in your life? Um, it's kind of unrelated, but right now it's figuring out my goal, or what I want to be when I grow up since I'm a senior now. Um, and I've been talking about it with some people, and they keep telling me, like, you know, let Jesus take the wheel. So obviously that's what I'm going to do. But, yeah, that's my <laughs> biggest problem right now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Toby, same question for you. What is the biggest challenge for you at this time in your life? Uh, probably just keeping my cool. Like, I get really angry at people, um, especially when they wrong me. Like, I want revenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they will always wrong me because they're human and I'm human, and I will wrong them, and then they'll get mad at me, and it's and that's what forgiveness is for. Um, also, reading the Bible more. <laughs> yeah. uh, for both of those, Elijah, I'll touch on yours first. I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of us are still figuring that out. That question is uh, very heavily put on you when you're a senior and trying to figure out what you're going to do. Um, so just pray and continue to ask and pick something. Like anything you're interested in, just pick it, stick to it, and then if it changes later on, Awesome. Just go with it. Um, And then Toby, yes, uh, even your last comment about reading your Bible more often. I think all of us in here, church, can agree that is something that we all can do more of. Um, And yes, forgiveness is hard, but thank you so much for sharing. Um, Abella, what challenges do you face when listening to what the world tells you versus what God tells you? Um... Well, first you have to figure out what what is God yeah. and listen to what he says about you. And um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I think I face, yeah, just following what the world says, like what to wear or what to do yeah. and not listening to what he says and what's good for me. And yeah. Thank you. Toby, same question for you. 
What challenges do you face when listening to what the world tells you versus what God tells you? Uh, this kind of plays in with the other one. Sometimes when I make a mistake or I wrong someone and someone calls it out, which they always should, Amen. otherwise I'm just going to keep going in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, I get really mad at myself and I call myself names like I'm a bad friend or I'm stupid or I can't do this. And I have to tell myself that that's just the devil yeah. spewing Amen. poopy stuff at me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Um, so, yeah, I need people to correct me on that. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Toby. Um, thank you for just being so vulnerable and sharing that up here. I was sharing with you guys um, in our huddle before we, before we had service. When we share up here, it's, it amplifies it and it allows the church to come alongside us and to pray for us. Um, so thank you so much. The church will be partnering with you and praying for that for you. So thank you, Toby. Um, let me use her. William. What can the older generations do to practically and specifically encourage you in your walk with Jesus? The older, the older generations, they're a lot older than me, and they're also wiser, and they know and have experienced more than me. And... I think by sharing their testimony and their own faith and how they came to know Jesus can guide me with my own walk with Jesus. And there's so many in this church that do that, and we're just so appreciative. You know, thank you. Alasia, the next question is for you. What do you wish older generations would know about being a teenager in today's society? Um, I wish first that they'd know that half the time I don't mean what I say, and I'm sorry. Um, second of all, I feel like knowing that um, phones, like accessibility since like a young age, has really heightened what I've seen. So I feel like, well, I'm, you guys already know about that, but I wanted to like um, accentuate that because I feel like that's really important. So please have patience with me, yeah. with us. Definitely be hard to navigate like all the things that the world throws at us, especially now that it's on a phone in front of our face all day. Thank you for sharing that. Abella, same question for you. What do you wish older generations would know about being a teenager in today's society? Can you say that one more time, please? <laughs> yes. What do you wish older generations would know about being a teenager in today's society? Um, well, we fall into the world and I mean, yeah, they do too, but like, they're older, like they have more experience with trying not to and all that, s yeah. Um, but I would say just helping us stay on the path of what is true and what God says. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Will, what can the church do to best support your generation? Just keep pouring into us and loving us like you guys already do. And I like that we get to play volleyball on Sundays nights, and it's not the, the adults, it's the youth too. And I think things that both involve the younger and the older generations. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing, Will. Um, let's give it up for these students. Amen. Well, let's, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for everything that you're doing in the next generation, Father. We thank you for each and every student that is up here, Father, that they got to uh, share part of their testimony, Father, that they got to connect with the next generation. Lord, we just thank you for the older generations that submitted their questions and were just able to ask in light of um, building a bridge to the next generation. Father, we just... We thank you for everything that you're doing in our church, in our students, in our youth ministry, Father. May we just continue to pour into these students as they said and needed from us, Father. Lord, we just thank you for everything you're doing in this church, and we praise you in your mighty name. You guys can go ahead and go find your seats. Thank you guys so much. Let's give them an applause as they find their seats. Amen. 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 Pastor Sean, you want to come join me up here? Caleb, sit there. We're going to interview you now to make sure you're yes, qualified. Hey. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <We're not gonna> <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> didn't want to scare him. Um, have a seat real quick. Have a seat real quick. I just kind of want to um, share with, with you guys. Uh, and so I, I love the perspective of our students. I don't know if you guys fall into this sometimes. Sometimes I can answer questions for somebody before I actually ask them the question. You guys probably don't, but I'll, I'll admit that I do that sometimes, especially with the next generation. Um, especially with like, oh, well, no, I know the challenge is this is just what you need to do and it'll be better. So, yeah. so hearing from their mouths, from their lips, uh, Will, I think you said something that really, really stuck with me, this idea of keep pouring into us and keep doing things that involve more than one generation. Um, it's so, so important. It's so, it's difficult, right? Logistically, sometimes it's difficult because what we have to come to terms with is that we might have to do something we just don't like doing <laughs> or don't want to do or aren't very good at doing or, you know, fill in the blank. Um, but church, I hope you're listening because the, the cry of the next generation that I was hearing a common theme throughout all of their answers was like, guys, we need you. We just don't know how to tell you that we need you. Um, and so old folk, which is everybody over 20, by the way, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so don't get offended by that statement. <laughs> Um, we have got to take the high road and push past what seems like an initial act of resistance towards the younger generation. When I was youth pastor, I used to tell our youth leaders all the time, I'm like, hey, you've got to absorb the awkward in the interaction with middle school and high school students, especially middle school and high school. Like, they're already not sure how to have that. We've got to absorb that. We can't fear the awkward so much to where we refuse to interact or refuse to, hey, let's go grab some coffee. Why? <laughs> I don't know, just to hang out. Why? Am I in trouble? What am I, what are we doing? I just want to take, can I give you coffee? I'm trying to buy you something. Can you, like, don't do that. <laughs> Keep pushing past the because there's a generation that is thirsty for it, that is hungry for it, and that needs us, church, to continue to step up, um, step up to the plate and push past those things. Amen. And the beautiful thing I think that we have here at Common Ground Church is we have examples of testimony uh, all over the place of that being the case. Do, is, does that mean every situation, every student is going to be the same? No. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, people are responsible for their own decisions and their own choices. But what we can do is everything that we can on our end uh, to help set our students, help them set the next generation up for success. I mean, take a look, Caleb. And Maya were both students in our youth ministry. Uh, I, I love the generational theme of God throughout the Bible. Is that he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And throughout the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, we see this promise of generations. We see Peter telling Cornelius, like, you and your household will be saved. Uh, you and your children. And so this idea of as spiritual family, we can actually have an impact on the next generation. Sometimes we just might not see it for 10 years. Um, sometimes we might not see it for 20 years. Sometimes we might not see it. But believe in that we are planting, we are watering, we are sowing that seed that eventually is going to impact. And, and I promise, eventually, right, it's, it's going to click. Maya, you shared a little bit about this morning during the tithes and offerings talk, even about a conversation, uh, years and years of sowing and pouring and watering, and then eventually kind of a conversation helped it click. It's, it, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, Pastor Sean and I talk about it all the time as youth pastors. We say the same thing week after 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 week. We can preach the same sermon 52 times a year, I promise, and it'll... But then we go to youth camp. And the cool guest speaker with tattoo sleeves and a cool haircut says the same thing we've been saying for a whole year and then at the discussion time, it's like, Pastor Sean, did you hear what they said? It totally changed my life. <laughs> and it's like, oh, has it now? <laughs> I'm so glad that God used that guest speaker. <laughs> but in those moments, like celebrating what, because God used you, you just may not get the credit for it yeah. from them or from until one day. But your father in heaven sees and knows and continues to build up. And because for us every week, parents, I can relate as well. You probably tell your kids 365 days a year. And then the cool youth pastor on Wednesday 
says something, they get home, Mom, Dad, you'll never guess what Pastor Sean said. And I'm like, I've been saying that for 15 years. And, you j- and so, folks, it's, it's, a, it's a team effort. It, it, it is a family effort. It is a spiritual family effort. It, it truly does take a village, take a spiritual family to pour into the next generation and to see some of those seeds be watered, to see some of that watering eventually come to harvest. And I promise you this, when you talk to some of these students, it's much deeper than you think it is. It is, it is much deeper, and, and they don't have a problem, at least in my experience, uh, opening up um, if you come at them with some respect and, and you honor them as well. Like, get in their worlds a little bit. Some practical things I think that would help is get yourself out of your element and willingly go into their element and just watch them open up to questions, to conversation, all those kind of things. Now, obviously, the groundwork is figuring out what that element is what that world is, go to their sports games, go to their theater performances, go to their choir performances, hang out and play video games with them, watch Star Wars with them, as painful as that was for me. (laughs) I told myself on the drive to this, like, I am going to love Star Wars. Come on, Matt, you can do this. I was punching myself in the face, like getting psyched up for it. No, I wasn't. Okay, okay. But get in their world, get in their element. They they have stuff that they want to share. And so um, received, amen? Amen. Build bridges, church. Build generational bridges. Um, so we're going to do something here. Um, uh, we're going to do something here in, in just a moment. We're going to pray over Caleb because today is actually the official day that Caleb is now the Common Ground Youth Director. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah. Incredible, incredible. Him and Maya, they're going to kind of be leading this thing and, and, and doing this thing together, which we're so grateful for. Uh, Pastor Sean had his last uh, service at CG Youth this past Wednesday, um, and uh, all the emotions, all the cries, all the things. Um, but before we transition to that, I, I do want to say to Pastor Sean, uh, well done. Um, well done for the last few years. We've... Um, We've been talking about this transition um, since his first day on the job. He became youth director. I'm like, okay, who's next? Uh, And he's like, did I mess up already? I'm like, I'm not fired. I'm like, no, 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 no. Thinking generationally. Like, good leaders, anointed leaders are not afraid to replace themselves because they know God will always have something for them. So, Caleb, our first topic of conversation tomorrow, Tuesday, just get ready, is who's next? Um, But what God has been doing these last... 12 years or so, really, uh, in, in our youth ministry is, is really laying and building a foundation. Uh, Pastor Sean came in, and he set up some scaffolding. He set up some framework. And, and what we're believing for um, is, is that this next season, uh, we're going to be able to now see in some uh, tremendous upward spiritual growth, um, influential growth within our city, within our schools, um, and, and numerical growth as well. I mean, this year we took the largest number of students we've ever taken to camp. Um, it, it's all just a testament to God being in control and knowing what he's doing. Amen. If he could use three knuckleheads like this to kind of help set a pace and then continue to move this church forward. And, and something I want to say before, and Pastor Sean, I want you to share uh, a little bit uh, as well before we pray over Caleb uh, and Maya. But something I want to encourage um, Everybody here with, specifically and especially those of you that have called Common Ground Church home way before it was Common Ground Church, when it was family church for for 10 plus years, who who saw me um, as the knucklehead that came in and was just a youth leader. Um, Never underestimate your impact for simply cheering somebody on uh, and believing that God has actually called that person and actually anointed that person. Um, because then what God had in store when Pastor JR, our founding pastor, uh, if you don't know who that is, retired uh, about three and a half years ago and I stepped in as lead pastor, a lot of the natural was, oh my gosh, how on earth am I going to pastor people 40 years older than me, 30 years older than me? Uh, That's already a challenge in everybody's mind. It becomes more of a challenge when those people, that, that older generation, is resistant to what God is doing in the younger generation. And so I'm thankful to be in a church where uh, at least if it was happening, it was happening behind my back and I didn't hear about it. Um, and I didn't see it. Never underestimate, church, how God is using you. And, and I'm talking to 
the boomers, the Gen Xers all right now, never underestimate at how God is using you, in fact, to build his church on earth simply by being that person that believes in someone else so much to say, God is working through you in mighty ways. God is working in you in mighty ways. Uh, lives are at stake, destinies are at stake, but you can see the fruits of when that happens and when it happens in such a beautiful and healthy way. So, so church, at, at, you know, as the younger generation was saying to all the older generations, my gen, I'm what's called an elder millennial, I think. Um, I don't know if that's uh, uh, completely accurate or not, but uh, I'm, I'm almost 36, all right? I'm 35 and three quarters. Uh, <laughs> that's my, so my generation to the older generation above me is, is please keep pouring into us. Please keep championing us. Please keep championing the younger generation. And my cry to the younger generation who is just up here, the 20-somethings as well, um, trust us and believe that we really do love you in everything that we pour into you. We're not trying to harp on your case. We're not trying to, uh, uh, I was about to age myself with a saying, harsh your vibe. Do we still say that? What do we say? Yeah, okay. I'll Google it later and I'll come up with a better one. <laughs> we're not just trying to call you out, we're trying to call you up uh, into what God has called you to and what God has prepared for you. Um, and so keep believing in us, keep trusting in us, and we will submit and, and we will keep pouring into you. We will keep calling it out of you. We will keep doing volleyball stuff on Sunday night. We will keep doing stuff that involves all generations um, because we believe in you, we love you. Amen? Amen. Pastor Sean, um, as we get ready to pray over Caleb and Maya, I just kind of want you to share maybe just a few thoughts, um, you know, parting ways, if you will. Romans 16, the end of, end of every Paul's letter when he's signing off as he's writing. Just some thoughts for Caleb, for Maya, for the church as well as we prepare to transition into uh, this season for our student ministry. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Um, and yeah, just give it up for Pastor Matt. I mean, he came into Ignite. Ignite, right. baby. Ignite. People still call it that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like, and really did lay a foundation um, and set the pace and what it would look like for future transitions because we essentially modeled exactly what he did for me through Caleb and how has the transition been? Amazing, in case you didn't hear. Sorry, I didn't give him the microphone. But no, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but like, he really did set the bar. Um, and he really did lay that foundation, and it was not easy, but, you know, easier to come along and, and do that. So, uh, man, seventh grade, were you seventh grade? It was seventh grade, and I was new to youth leadership, and Caleb actually approached me and was like, hey, would you disciple me? <laughs> huh? Uh, in case you don't know my church history background, it was like nothing from 15 till 30 some odd. So I had no idea what that meant, no idea what I was doing, and got guidance from my pastor. And um, yeah, started off freezing in his room, and I was like, okay, that's got to change. I can't sit in a 64-degree room for an hour. I don't have. I just said, okay, question number three. Uh, so we started going out on drives and doing this, and, and even stuff like uh, taught him how to use a pickaxe, because I needed backyard work done. Um, <laughs> but hey, hey whoa. <laughs> wasn't like child labor, okay, calm down. But, you know, in your schedules, because you have a busy schedule, something that Pastor Matt taught me is like, just bring them along with you. It wasn't like I was sitting in the house watching TV, like, nope, got to go deeper, got to be 18 inches. Let me know if you need help. Like, it's like out there with him, like, hey, I have some work in the backyard I have to do. Will you come and hang out with me and we'll kind of do it together? Sure. So, like the grass that's in my backyard, these two men actually helped me. Uh, Will Barrow that. He's like, <laughs> I'm tired. Like, yeah, good. Keep going. We're not done yet. Uh, pickaxe, right? It was like 50 some odd feet of an 18 inch trench to get power to my shed. Uh, and <laughs> Child labor laws. Like you said. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it together and it was a lot of fun. And those moments, I guarantee you, he remembers more so than anything I said on this stage. It was doing life together and just showing him that I was there, I remember we had uh, one meeting and we walked to the park by your house and I asked him, I was like, what, what is the, I guess, what is the thing that you get most out of our meeting together? Like, what, what's the value that you see? And it wasn't, oh, Sean, 
your amazing wisdom and advice and telling me all the things that I should be doing that I'm not doing. It wasn't that at all. It was knowing that you're there when I need you. That was it. That's the value. And I think about that as a parent, uh, as myself, and, and all the control that we try to have over our kids, the control, the control, the control. And with his situation, again, different, not my, not my you know, physical son, but my spiritual one, and the, the road that they did go on and you know, got off track a little bit, and it wasn't trying to control their situation. It was when they needed to come over and have a conversation, we were there. And those are the things that led to like, hey, we can go to them because they will be there for us to support us. Yes, to guide us, but to love us as we walk through this. So any encouragement for you in the next generation, just support them and love them first and foremost. They know <laughs> all the things they're doing wrong. When you were a kid and you did something wrong, did you not know? When mom and dad were like, you did this. <gasps> I'm shocked. Oh, there it is. I'm shocked. <laughs> I had no idea that I wasn't supposed to throw rocks at cars as they drove by the street. What do you mean I'm wrong? Like, they know. They know. Love them and walk with them through the struggle, through the pain. Thank you, Pastor Sean. And yeah. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Leave the brother hanging when he's preaching good. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You said, like, in that moment, it wasn't like, oh, my gosh, it's your amazing wisdom that I love about our time together. But... Years down the road, as he looks back, we've had a conversation. It's like, yeah, Pastor Sean is full of wisdom, and he's always poured it into me. Just wasn't recognized in the moment. And now, you know, sometimes it's a little eight-count nugget of wisdom. Sometimes it's a full-on 12-count with barbecue sauce and a large Dr. Pepper. Sometimes it's a, hey, sit down. You're not talking. I'm talking this time for one hour straight. <laughs> um, and so Common Ground Church, we, we, we also we want to say thank you for being a generational church because as we, as we look around, like the people that are involved in the lives of our students aren't just the leaders that are here on Wednesday. Um, those leaders, I mean, now they're on the front lines and we're championing them, we're thankful for them, but it, it is a church-wide thing. You don't have to have an official position to pour into the next generation. And so we're pleading with you. Meet a teenager before you leave today. Go up and introduce yourself and just just bask in the glory of the awkwardness that <laughs> unfolds before you. Um, and just how can I be praying for you? Yeah. Just that's it. And, and you never know how much that could go. And those of us that are leaders in this church, I want to encourage us to continue to call up the next generation. Um, the beautiful thing is you don't even always have to tell them you're calling them up. Just start calling them up. It's like, hey, uh, why don't you come hang out with, you know, we're having a pizza night at Pizza Nine. Why don't you come hang out, Sean? <laughs> See if you like it. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, this could be the guy. But if I tell him that now, oh, God, no. I don't want to do, <laughs> or with, with, with Maya, even today, it's like, hey, why don't you just serve as host for Youth Unity Sunday? We'll get past it. We'll see what happens. And it's like, got her. <laughs> <laughs> So, so don't be afraid, don't be hesitant to call up and, and just be prayerful uh, for our students. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we want to pray over, we're going to ask you guys if you would stand to your feet and join us. We want to pray over Caleb and Maya. Uh, we have any, uh, Chris, would you come up and join us on stage, please, sir? Any of my other elders that I don't see, um, why aren't you in church? Is my, no, I'm just <laughs> Got him on the live stream too, Chris. <laughs> Uh, we just want to pray over Caleb and Maya as they kind of step into this season uh, that God is leading. So we're just going to ask you guys, if you would, just kind of extend a hand uh, as we pray over uh, this amazing couple. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for, uh, God, your goodness. Uh, we thank you for your faithfulness. Yes. God, we thank you and praise you for being a generational God. Yes. Uh, God, you are not hyper-focused on one generation more than the next generation, uh, Father. But what you are focused on it is your name, your church, your people being continually poured into and built up generation after generation mm -hmm. after generation. Yes. Father, so give, uh, speak to us where we're at, Father. No matter how old we are, generation-wise, how young we are, anything like that, speak to us where we're at, Father. Reveal to us how you want to use us to be generationally minded uh, like you are, God. 
Uh, God, right now we, we lift up Caleb, we lift up Maya as they get ready to step into this next season uh, of calling, uh, Father, this next season of responsibility, uh, God, and this next season of anointing. God, we pray uh, a double portion of anointing on Caleb, Father, as he leads, on Maya, uh, as she leads with him, Father. God, for wisdom to know what to do, for wisdom to lean on the leaders around him. Uh, God, for wisdom, and we pray for a harvest field of leaders, Father. Uh, God, leaders that are committed in the, in, in the week in, week out grind of youth ministry. God, but for also leaders who maybe don't have that kind of margin to do the week to week, Father, but they have a desire to help. Uh, God, give Caleb and Maya the wisdom to welcome them in and place them in places that will be effective in how that person is gifted, how that person is wired, uh, Father, and how that person can contribute and impact our youth ministry here at Common Ground. Um, Father, we pray for a harvestful uh, uh, souls of students, Father. God, that the students that are in our youth ministry right now, God, that they would be begin to, and even more so, being discipled by the group of leaders that are there, discipled by this church here, Father. God, so that they can go to their school campuses, Father, and, and rather than the peer pressure being on them, God, let them apply a little bit of peer pressure of their own yeah, yeah. about what it looks like to follow Jesus and be so warm and welcoming and, and contagious and on fire, God, for the Lord that other people are looking like, what is going on with that guy? What is going on with that girl? I, I need to know a little bit more about it. God, and give our students boldness, wisdom, and compassion, Father. Give them a heart of compassion to bring the gospel to their school campuses, to all environments that they find themselves in. God, we thank you for Caleb and Maya. We thank you that you have called them. God, we agree as pastors, as elders, that you have in fact called and anointed Caleb and Maya to lead our youth ministry in this season. God, we as a leadership team, we as a church, we throw our full support behind them, yes. Father. And we commit to praying for them day in and day out that you would use them in mighty ways, Father. Uh, God, we love you so much. We give you all glory, all honor. It's in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Can we give Caleb and Maya some applause? Woo. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Thank you.